Hey guys and welcome back to the Coder's Legacy channel. In this video we'll take a look at SymPy and how we can use it to create matrices. SymPy is a library for scientific computation and mathematical operation, numerical computing in Python. And one of the many features that it gives us is the ability to create matrices, actual matrix objects that we can actually perform computations on, like multiplying two matrix objects to get our resultant, or find the determinant, find the transpose, and many, many other amazing features. All right, so let's start. We'll first import the matrix class, okay? Then we'll create our first matrix object. And inside these parentheses, we're gonna make a 2D list, okay? And every list within this 2D list is going to be a, symbol, a single row, okay? Each list over here, each one of these represents a single row. So I'm gonna do one, two, and three, four. So now the first row, this is the first row, and this is the second row. Okay, now I want to print this matrix out. So let me just use the regular print function first. Okay, but this will not really give us a very good representation. And that's because it's just gonna print out the matrix object like that. But SymPy gives us the pretty print function. And if we use this, it's going to give us a much better representation. All right, that looks a lot better and something we're familiar with, okay? Now, let's take a look at this and explore some other examples and different ways of creating matrices. Because for example, I want to add in an, another row, okay? I want to make a three by two matrix. I'm gonna pass in another single list in here, okay? And this should give us, yeah. All right, now if I want to increase the number of columns, of course, we need to just add in extra values inside and as you can see over here, this is giving an error due to mismatched dimensions. So one list, okay, or one row cannot have, uh, you know, a different number of dimensions. It cannot have a different number of columns. This row has three columns, this row has two, this row has two, you cannot do that. So if you want to do something like that, if you want to increase the number of columns, you need to, you need to add in a value in each row, okay? So now it's a three by three matrix. One more thing we should take a look at is how to create 1D or vectors, okay? Vectors are basically just um, 1D matrices, one-dimensional matrices, okay? And for example, a row vector is basically a single row with any number of columns. A column vector is a single column with any number of rows. So if, if I want to make a column vector, I'll do um, one, two, three. This should give us a single column vector with three rows. All right. Now, some people get confused in making row vectors and column vectors because they expect this to be a row vector, but it's not, okay? Because this is basically three separate vectors. Sorry, three, se three separate values, three separate rows, okay? It's the same thing, okay? If you want to make a row vector, you need to actually do, hold on, let me, let me just remove these. What you need to do is actually this, okay? I'm just leaving some spaces in between these so that you can see what's going on here, okay? But you need to put it all into one single list within the two-dimensional list, okay? And this will give us a row vector, all right? Following along so far? I hope so. So what else can we do with matrices? Well, something very interesting that we can do is just take out the transpose using the dot T attribute. Watch, this should give us the column vector representation. Okay, we applied transpose on the row vector, so we got the column vector. Okay, fairly basic stuff. Now let's just uh, get a simple 2D matrix back here and let's apply some mathematical operations. Okay. So the first thing I wanna try using is determinant. So we'll just use the determinant method, okay? And this will calculate the determinant. And the answer is minus two. Okay, you can verify that yourself. It's gonna be correct, obviously. But what else can we do with matrices? Well, we can apply mathematical operations, okay? Let's go ahead and create one more matrix, okay? And 
we'll just do that, call it matrix two, change its values up a bit, five and six, seven and eight. All right, now what we can do is just multiply these two matrices, okay? Just remember something important to keep in mind are the rules of multiplying matrices. As you might know, you cannot just multiply any two matrices. There are rules. For example, if you have a two by two matrix and another two by two matrix, you can multiply these. But if you have a two by two and a three by two, you can't multiply them. A general rule or a way of figuring out whether whether two matrices are multipliable or not, just look at the, the columns for the first matrix and the rows for the second matrix. And if both of them match, you can multiply them. Okay, so if this, is it correct or not? What do you think? It is correct because these two are same. Okay, a matrix, a three by two matrix and a two by three matrix can be multiplied. All right, so that's the basic logic behind multiplying matrices. These two are obviously gonna work because they're two by two and two by two. Just watch. Okay, let's try adding them. Again, addition has its own rules. They must be the same size. Okay, minus. Okay, so yeah, fairly standard. We're getting what we expect. What else is there? Well, we can take the inverse. We just multiply this by minus one, or sorry, not multiply, power it to minus one, and this will give us the inverse. No function needed, no nothing. This just easily gives us the inverse. You can also d multiply it with regular numbers. Okay, multiply any matrix with a regular constant. Okay, you can also again use the power with any constant. Okay, fairly standard. And what else is there now? Inverse, we covered transpose, we covered determinant, we covered, all right, oh, of course adding rows, removing rows, and accessing rows. How do we do that in matrices? Well, if I want to access the first row, I'll use the row method, okay? And as you can see, there's row, row del for delete row, row insert for row join, and there are a few others in there as well. We'll just discuss these three in, in today's video. So if I want to access the first row, I'm gonna do zero, okay? Because indexing starts from zero, and this will give us the first row, which is one and two. Okay, if you want the second row, you just do this. All right, for a call, again, same thing. Sorry about that. All right, so if you just do this. All right, two and four. Okay, which is two and four. Okay, and if we go back to see where we printed it out, um, yeah. Two and four is the first column. One and three is the zeroth column or the first column, depending on how you wanna interpret that. So if I just do call zero, this should give us one and three, okay? It's very basic stuff. Let's take a look at inserting rows and columns. If I want to insert a row, I'm just going to first pass in the index where I want to insert the row. So for example, I want to append a new row. Okay, I'm gonna pass in two because you want to you know, add a new row after the other two rows. And the other two rows occupy zero and one, so you'll add it at two. And over here, you're gonna pass in a matrix object, okay? And just leave some space over there. And over here, I want to append another row. So what people often do is they try passing in something like uh, five and five, for example, and this is gonna give an error. Why is that? The reason this is giving an error is because as I told you before, this is a column vector. It's not a row vector. So let's just make this a row vector now and it's gonna work, okay? If I run this, it's gonna work, all right? Well, one more thing I just wanna mention that this function is not in place uh, in the sense that if you call this function and if I print out, if I print out matrix one later, the changes will not be in there. Okay, the matrix one is unchanged. If you want to change matrix one, you need to actually, you know, do this. Okay, this is gonna return an object actually. So what you do is make it equal to it. And then you print out matrix one 
and it's going to be updated. Okay, great. Now that's basically how do we insert rows. Just one more thing I'll show you. You can actually insert rows and columns in between existing rows. So if I insert it at one, it's going to insert five and five in the middle. Okay, or here it did it in the end, or here it does it in the middle. Okay, so that's how you insert rows and columns. Inserting columns is the exact same procedure. Okay, uh, let's take a look at deleting rows and columns, row del. Okay, this is very simple. You just need to pass in the index of the row you want to delete. And this is going to delete the first row. Oh, okay. Yeah, actually, because row del is a method that changes in place the matrix. Okay, so you don't need to reassign it. Okay, this gives us one and two. And the reason it gives us only one and two is because it's deleted the three and four row okay the row with the values three and four which is the first row or the second row depending on how you want to see it okay it's technically the second row but it's the first row the first index row okay so yeah if you delete the zeroth index row the row at the zeroth index this will give us just three and four as you can see there great so let's try deleting a column okay if we try to delete the second column we should get, I think, just one and three, right? Because two and four will be deleted. Yes, good. Okay, again, this is how you delete columns. And we could discuss how to access rows, delete rows, insert rows. Okay, great. There's just one thing left, then that means. Okay, so I wanna show you a different way of creating matrices, which is I's and ones and zeros. Okay, these are ways, special ways of initializing and creating matrices. All right, so let's just uh, use the pretty print function. And inside the parameters, I'm going to call the eyes function. The eyes actually kind of stands for uh, identity. I'm not sure why they're calling it eyes over here. But for example, you pass in three. This will create a square three by three identity matrix. OK, let me just show you the output. And what is wrong with this? Is it? Uh, I, I think. All right, yeah, this this should work. All right, so there's our three by three identity matrix, and the reason we just need to pass in one parameter instead of you know a three by three is because identity matrices are always uh, square. Okay, so that's why you just need to pass in one parameter, and it'll make a n by n identity matrix. Okay, so that's what I does. Okay. What does ones do? Well, it creates uh, n, let's, let's call the first parameter m and the second parameter n. So it creates a m by n matrix that is all initialized to one. And let me show you the output. This is a three by two matrix, as you can see. Okay, so yeah, all of it is initialized to one. Okay, now zeros is the exact opposite and it'll create a M by N matrix all initialized to zero. Okay, so yeah, it's a pretty handy way of quickly creating matrices without having to you know, define all those rows yourself. Okay, if you want to create an empty matrix for later use, this is a really great method. Okay, so yeah, we've covered quite a bit of content. We've covered, uh, I think, about 60-70% of what's there in matrices for SymPy. There's obviously still more. There's extra methods, and there's a bunch of cool stuff that you can do. It's a bit niche, though, so I decided not to cover it. And just to prevent the video from getting too long, maybe we'll discuss those later on. I plan on making some videos on uh, actually using SymPy in real-life applications, in real-life math problems. Okay, like Taylor series and stuff. So we might discuss it uh, in some video over there. Okay, and yeah, that's about it. I do hope you guys subscribe to the channel because we have more Python content, more SymPy content. All right. I hope to see you guys in another video of mine. Let me know if there's anything that you want to see in the future. Maybe I'll make a video on that. All right, later.